If you think you might've found a meteorite, that's awesome. And you're definitely not alone. I get tons of messages every day from folks asking if I can tell them if their rock came from space. But I'm gonna keep it real with you. I don't really engage with those requests much because I simply can't keep up with the volume of them and the discussion that typically ensues. That said, there are pathways towards authenticating your rock if you really wanna do so. And I'm going to talk through some of those steps in this video. First, I'm going to assume you've done lots of research and looked up plenty of examples of what meteorites look like. It's not enough that a rock looks strange. Lots of rocks look weird. Meteorites have key features that identify them as extraterrestrial in origin. Things like a fusion crust, chondrules, regmaglyphs, and so on. Likewise, some stones have specific features that exclude them from being meteorites. The presence of earth minerals, sedimentary layers, etc. All told, a lot of rocks can look like meteorites, but they aren't. You need to remember that planets and asteroids are mostly made of the same stuff, and that can make meteorite identification a little bit tricky. Now, once you've done some research, I want you to look up a Facebook group called Meteorite or Meteor Wrong. It's full of expert volunteers who've studied meteorites for years, including several of my friends and colleagues. Start by reading their guidelines, and then you can post photos of your rock along with some basic information about its discovery. The images need to be high quality and show the stone in good lighting from all sides. The folks there will chime in and help you figure out whether you're on the right track with a visual inspection. With all that said, I wanna stress that these folks are volunteers. They aren't paid for this work. Also, their expertise is in meteorites, not geology more broadly speaking. They can usually pretty definitively say that something isn't a meteorite from visual inspection, but that doesn't mean they can tell you what sort of earth rock or slag it might be. Now, if your rock does seem like a real meteorite, they'll guide you to the next step, which might include sending a sample to a lab for classification, but that's only after it shows real promise. Now you might be saying, Chris, why not skip that step and go straight to the lab? I'm glad you asked. It's primarily because there aren't many meteoritic labs and they're mostly already overwhelmed with wait times for classifications taking months or years. If these labs had to test every rock someone thought was a meteorite, they'd never get anything done. Lab testing is expensive, time consuming, and usually not offered to the general public unless there's a strong chance a rock is the real deal. If you do get that far, you can expect to spend between three and $400 on the analysis and wait for several months. So that's the pathway I'm gonna to recommend to folks. If you go this route, please be kind to the volunteers assessing your rock. Most of these folks are rooting for you. They want you to find meteorites because we think they're awesome and we want to further the science of the hobby. That said, you have to be realistic too. The vast, vast majority, I'm talking 99% of the submissions to these groups and even the rocks I get pictures of in my inbox are simply not meteorites. Set your expectations accordingly here. If you want to get a better idea of what real meteorites look like, make sure to give my channel a follow. I'm going to show you lots of examples of all sorts of different type of meteorites and a few meteor wrongs too. 